This is the third video over fractions, and this is over complex fractions. So the first thing that I'm going to do is define complex fractions, and then we'll talk about how to simplify or how to reduce them. So complex fractions are what you see here. Basically, it is a large fraction. It's a large fraction where it has small fractions inside of it. Now, there's two different ways in which you can go about simplifying complex fractions, and I'm going to show you both of these ways. Each of them probably has an equivalent level of difficulty, but I suggest that you really start to learn the second way because it's going to be a much better process for you throughout the rest of the semester. So the first method. Now this is the method that's probably most intuitive to you. If I just told you to pause the video and work this on your own, this is probably the method that you would start with. And that's perfectly understandable and perfectly fine because that's the way I would probably do it as well. So the, the key to this method is you want to divide the fractions. And you do that because this division bar in the middle here just means divide. So really we have the top of this fraction divided by the bottom of this fraction. But there's kind of a trick that goes with it. If I just wrote it out in that format at this time. So the top of this fraction divided by the bottom of this fraction. If I put it in this format, that's actually incorrect because it really means I need to take the whole top of this fraction and divide it by the whole bottom of this fraction. And you might think those parentheses don't really mean anything involved. Well, they actually do. If I just look at this over here, this divided by actually just means to change the 5, 6. But if I go ahead and insert those parentheses in, I can see that those divided by actually goes to this whole second set of parentheses. Now, something that I see students do quite often, which is not correct, so I suggest that you don't do this, is when you divide this whole thing here, that doesn't mean you can just flip over each individual fraction. That is incorrect. So what I suggest is that you don't put it into this division format until you actually have it as one fraction in the numerator divided by one fraction in the denominator. And then we can write it as a division problem just like it seems. Okay, so I have a clean slate here. Again, what my goal is is to have one fraction in the numerator divided by one fraction in the denominator, and then I will actually do the fraction division. So I'm going to go ahead and just put those parentheses in here just to remind you that you cannot just flip individual fractions. You have to simplify it first. So to get one fraction in the numerator, I need to combine this 4 thirds minus 1. Well, how do we combine fractions and whole numbers? It's actually quite simple. I'm just going to rewrite it here, and I'm going to take 4 thirds minus 1, but I'm going to write 1 as a fraction, and I can do that by just dividing it as 1. So if you ever want to convert a whole number into a fraction, you just divide it by 1. Now to subtract fractions, we learned in the last video, what we need to do is to find a common denominator. Well, the LCD between 3 and 1 is just 3. So I need to multiply this denominator over here by 3 over 3. And I actually don't need to do anything with this left fraction. So don't make it more complicated than what it needs to be. So if I do this fraction multiplication, I have 4 thirds minus 3 thirds. Now, if you've done it correctly, 3 thirds reduces back to 1 over 1, which reduces back to 1. And of course, that all does, so we have done it correctly. But remember, I don't want to reduce anything yet because I want to combine these two fractions together. And to do that, I need to have my LCD. So I'm just going to subtract my numerators. So I take 4 minus 3, which is 1, over my LCD, which is 3. So at this point, I have half of my goal. I have one fraction in the top. Now I need to do the same thing with the denominator. So I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can finish out the problem from here. So I'm going to write this as 5, 6 plus 2. Make my 2 into a fraction by putting it over 1. 
and then my LCD between 6 and 1 is 6. So I'm going to multiply my right fraction by 6 over 6. So that gives me 5, 6 plus 12, 6. And when I add these fractions, 5 plus 12 gives me 17, 6. So I've satisfied my second goal, or the second half of my goal, and creating a one fraction on the bottom. Now I can actually change this into a division problem, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. One third divided by 17 over 6. Well, we learned how to divide fractions. It's as easy as pi. You flip the second, or you take the reciprocal of the second fraction and multiply. So one third times six over 17. And we learn to multiply fractions. We multiply the fractions straight across. But I emphasize reducing first, and I'm still going to keep up with that emphasis. I can reduce six and three. Three goes into itself one time, and it goes into six two times. I cannot reduce anything else, so I'm just going to multiply straight across. 1 times 2 gives me 2, and on the bottom, 1 times 17 gives me 17. I cannot reduce any farther, so this is my final answer of 2 over 17. So my main goal of method number 1 is to get 1 fraction divided by 1 fraction, and then just to go with fraction division. Flip and multiply, reduce, cancel, and go from there. Okay, my second method, and this is what I like to call my magic trick. Now, the magic trick is going to be more work up front, but once you start to understand that work, you can start skipping those steps, and it's going to be less work overall. So I'm going to run through the steps here but they're going to make more sense when I apply them to a problem. And actually, I'm going to apply them to the exact same problem that we just solved the other way. The first thing that we need to do is we need to focus on the numerator, and we need to find the LCD of that. Then we need to switch our focus to the denominator, and again, we need to find the LCD of that. So we'll have two separate LCDs between the numerator and the denominator. But we want to find an overall LCD, an LCD that goes between both of those. So an LCD between both the numerator and the denominator. Once we do that, we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by that LCD that we just came up with. In doing this, it's going to make everything cancel out. Hence, it's going to make the denominator disappear. And that's why I call it my magic trick, because in magic, typically something always disappears. So here, the individual denominators are all going to disappear, and so you're going to only be left with one simple fraction, which we already know how to do. Once we get down to that one simple fraction, it's just basic techniques of simplify it and reduce it, things that we've definitely learned up until this point. So let's see an example, or let's see the example of this here. And again, this is the exact same problem that we saw before, so we're going to get the exact same answer. We're just doing it a different way. Okay, so I'm starting my focus on the numerator, and I need to find my LCD of the numerator. Now, we did this the previous way, so let me just recap it. If I give my second fraction a denominator of 1, I find the LCD between 3 and 1 is, of course, 3. I need to do the same thing with the denominator. So I make 2 into a fraction of 2 over 1. I find the LCD between 6 and 1, and of course my LCD of that is 6. So that's what step number 1 asks us to do. Step number 2 asks us to come up with an overall LCD. So between 3 and 6, my overall LCD will be 6, because both of those go into 6. So my overall LCD is 6. So that means I finished step number 2. So those aren't too bad. Now comes step number 3. Now this is definitely going to seem complicated at first, but I promise the more times you work through these, it's going to get easier and easier, and actually you'll probably able to skip step number three in the long run. I'm going to write it out full and completely here so you can understand what I'm doing. But again, overall, you should ideally be able to eventually skip this step. Okay. 
So I need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by my LCD. So I have 4 over 3 minus 1 over 5 over 6 plus 2. And I'm going to multiply by 6, my LCD on the top, and by 6, my LCD on the bottom. And I can do that as long as I multiply it both in the top and the bottom. Now, really, I need to multiply it by everything in the top, and I need to multiply it by everything in the bottom. So I'm going to rewrite this out as one more step, and basically, I'm going to take 6 times each of these individual fractions. Now, again, this is going to seem complicated at this time, but the more times you do this, you'll eventually be able to skip this step, and then you won't even have to worry about it. So I'm going to write it all out. 4 thirds times 6. Or if you want to see it as fractions, you might put it as 6 over 1, minus 1, and I'm going to leave that as a whole number times 6 here because both of those are whole numbers, divided by 5, 6 times 6, or 6 over 1 if you want to see it as a fraction, plus 2 times 6, and again, I'm leaving it as a whole number because those are already whole numbers. Seems complicated right now, but I guarantee once we get past this step, we're down to the nitty-gritty, and from here, we barely have any work left. So I need to multiply this 6 through all of these pieces. Now I'm going to start with the easiest ones. So on the top right here, I have 1 here. I have 1 times 6. 1 times 6 gives me 6, and that was a subtraction, so I'll put that there. In my bottom right, I have 2 times 6. Well, that gives me 12 with an addition, so I'll leave it like that. That's just basic multiplication, no big deal there. In the bottom left, I need to multiply these fractions out. But remember, the first step of fraction multiplication is actually reducing. I can reduce 6 over 6. So in this in these out, you don't actually want to do any multiplication. You want to actually cancel out, and that should work. It should cancel, hence the reason our denominators disappear. Because all I have left with is 5 divided by 1, which we know simplifies to be 5. So in the denominator, I just have 5 plus 12. In the numerator, I have 4 thirds times 6 over 1. Again, I want to reduce it. 6 divided by 3 gives me 2. So 4 times 2 gives me 8, and 8 divided by 1 is just 8. So at this point, I just have basic math and a simple fraction, which we already know how to do. So let me just simplify it. 8 minus 6 gives me 2, over 5 plus 12 gives me 17. Now if I could reduce, I would, but I don't need to. I've already done all that, so that is my final answer. So like I said before, this step is going to seem complicated the first couple of times you work through this problem, but I promise eventually you'll basically be able to skip this step, and so you go from this complicated fraction all the way down to this simple fraction with just one simple step. Okay, so to review complex fractions, we have two methods. Method one is where we get one fraction over one fraction, and then we flip and multiply and just follow our basic fraction rule. And step number two is the magic trick. When we do the magic trick, all of these individual denominators disappear, and we're left with just one basic fraction. And so that summarizes complex fractions, and that's where this video ends.